back, Joyce is Justice League, to part three of Breaking Nose, episode two. We uh, got off a huge slate of awesome indie stuff coming out in 2014. Now let's just kind of tone it down a bit. Let's talk a little bit about what we've been playing recently. So let's uh, kick it off with you, Joe. What been, uh, what's been spinning your uh, your discs lately? <laughs> some, some really, really good stuff. Actually, no disc spinning because I've been all about mobile this week. Really? And uh, first one i got to talk about is, this is actually one that you turned me on to that uh, I, I didn't even really know about it. Sad that actually I didn't get to start playing this sooner and that is Hotline Miami. Oh my god, I love this game. For the, I've been playing on, on the Vita. It's available on other stuff, but anyway, so I've been playing on Vita and... Oh my god, okay, so this is... Quite a twisted uh, oh man. It, game, it, isn't it? it, 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 it it's, it's very simple, it's very hard, it's frustrating, it's crazy. <laughs> like seriously, the, in between the one mission, the, the, there's some stuff that, that just it puts a smile on my face. Like you walk into the pizza place and... the. For some reason, it's the same guy running the store. It's like the same guy. But you walk in, and he's like, "Here, I got your pizza ready for you." I'm like, "Dude, I didn't even order one." <laughs> and and there's one mission where I didn't even notice that there was somebody that I actually had to save, and she was laying in, in a bathtub. And I go to leave, and she's like, "Hey, asshole! Like, are you gonna save me?" And I'm like, "Okay, you just called me an asshole. Now you want me to save you?" Like, like it's just it's over the top. It, it, it's 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 a hard game. Like it, it's this is definitely not uh, like an arcade kind of game. You're gonna fight. You you're gonna die gruesomely several 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 times. But it, it is just a blast to play this game. Yeah, for anybody who still hasn't played Hotline Miami, oh, I mean, like set it up. For, so what what what's this game about? Like what kind of game is this? Like what what is it about? Uh, it, it, it's uh, you know, I think even uh, people that uh, maybe even a fan of old Miami Vice. The, the TV show, which uh, going off on a tangent here, that was actually the very first TV show I remember seeing as a kid. <laughs> and uh, it, it, this did kind of drive me to this game, the, the, the whole kind of thing. But it, it, it's it's, it's a, got that eighties feel, yeah, the neon colors, it, it, they, even the soundtrack. Right, it, it's a it, it's a very very dark. You know, it, it's a kind of like it's 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 it's, it's overhead it's, kind it's, of GTA style, it's, almost, yeah. old school GTA. Yeah, and it, it's just that the levels are very simple. But I mean, Jesus, it is hard, but it is satisfying. When you, when you when you do finally pull it off though, it's like yes. Yeah, this game's a grinder. I mean, I, I played through this online. I, I broadcasted this thing. You think I swear during Super Meat Boy? You see me do, oh, do the same room like fifty this. times in a row oh, on Hot right. Miami. Uh, like some of the floors are so well laid out and well strategized. It's really a, a grind to have to get through these levels. It's so old school and it's hardcore challenge. It really almost feels like like an overhead Demon Souls in a sec. That it's just it doesn't forgive. The enemies are quick. Yeah. And, and the music, man. Oh, you yeah. mentioned the music. That's a nice atmosphere. Too. It has a disclaimer right on the Vita version. This game is best played with headphones. It's this trippy kind of dubstep kind of soundtrack. Yeah. This almost feels like like if David Fincher and, and Terry Gilliam met up exactly. in the 90s and made a video game. This is what would turn out. This is it's a, it's a, it's a gross game, like very gruesome, twisted. Oh, You've got God. the mind control themes, like the yeah. MK Ultra. You're definitely under mind control. You have like the story twists and turns. There's multiple endings. Yeah, and it's cheap as shit. Yeah. Like it, the, the price just came down on Steam to like under three bucks. Yeah. Same thing on PlayStation Plus. Oh man, it, it is. Even if this game was like twenty bucks, I would still have like bought it. It's just it's just twisted. Yeah. Original. It was from Devolver Digital. They're coming out with Hot Lemonade 2 first on PS4 and then all their platforms. So cool stuff. Another one you're playing this week is uh, second season of Walking Dead. Oh yeah. Episode. There you go, Clementine. Right. Yeah, because uh, now you know it's. it's well, I gotta try and keep this fairly spoiler. No spoilers. But uh, it's a uh, it's it's a continuation of uh, of Walking Dead. I mean, obviously this is extremely popular. We all know that the first season was 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 incredible. You're you're starting the second season off. You're Clementine, right? She's uh, she's aged a little bit. She's she's a little bit older, and it, it's uh, they've really uh, gameplay wise, it's very very similar, but they have refined it. It does because I've been playing it on an iPad, and it feels very very responsive, even more so I think than the first one. And um, one of the this is. Debatable whether this is a spoiler or not, but uh, I will t tell you about that one point in this game where it's sometimes she gets injured, she gets bit, bit by a dog, and you're, you're literally, especially with the touch controls, like I, I was looking away while I did this, she, she gets bit, and you literally have to st stitch, close the, the wound on her arm, and, and like I, as I'm playing it, I'm like pressing the button, I'm going, oh jeez, you know, it, 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 it's a very, very like, like. Original Walking Dead, it, 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 it's it's such a good 
solid game to play. Oh, it's I, I had a blast playing it, and there's still four more episodes to come. Yeah, it's funny you oh. mentioned that the very slow, repeated oh. kind of action of first stitching yourself. Yeah. It reminds me of the of the part in the first season where you're burying the dog, yeah. and it seems like it, the scene goes one minute longer than it should, but it's really trying to get that emotional impact. And, I, and I, that's what I love about Telltale. It's like they're working with the, the visual video game medium, but they're bringing in the emotion of what comes out of reading a tale. You know, yeah. of, that, that's something you don't really get in an action film or a, or a movie adaptation or a video game adaptation. They're really bringing that in by by drawing out those emotional moments, you know, by really making you cringe, by making you cry. You know, it's really awesome about these guys is that, you know, before Lucky did, they, they did Back to the Future, but they, they really did, you know, uh, in my opinion, it come out of nowhere to be like a really, really good developer. Absolutely, I mean, they had their underground audience with Sam and Max, you know, yeah. like you said, Back to the Future, I mean, not so much with Jurassic Park. But I mean, with with Walking Dead, though, I mean, it's just it's you know, for most people last year, it was their game of the year. It was fate, game, really. So. It was, it was, you take oh. you take a great idea of like having multiple endings, like your choose your own adventure style, but you attach it to The Walking Dead, which in that time it was in its second season, mm -hmm. probably harder than it is now, yeah. like with its original fan base. So it was just the marriage of two perfect ideas at the right time, in the right kind of year, 2012, when. People were demanding something a bit more sublime, a bit more aesthetic, like Journey and stuff like that. You know, that was the right time for it to come out. And now, I mean, getting into my next game, the one that I've been playing right now, Wolf Among Us, their their follow-up to Walking Dead, Telltale, man, like they're just pushing the envelope. I mean, yep. if you if you this one was kinda flew under the radar, it was I considered it risky when I first heard about it, but I actually got sat down to play some of episode one now. Man. It's like Sin City meets Aesop's Fables. Yeah. You're, you're like this New York, like neon bleached environment, like this rundown kind of ghetto, and all the fairy tale characters have been exiled into this borough. And what's happened now is that they have this thing that they have called glamour, which keeps them in human form. So now the big bad wolf has been humanized into the, the, the sheriff of the town or whatever. Yeah. And obviously, you know, he's had a history with the, he's had a really bad history with all these fairy tales, yeah. you know, of like, you know, terrorizing three little pigs. Now he has to govern these people yeah. and keep them from fighting each other. But here's the added thing. You've got this dystopian thing where, say the three little pigs who can't, like the, the characters who can't afford the glamours, which are very expensive, they have to go into their fairy tale form and they're forced to go to the farm, which is upstate. Wow. So, you, like, I haven't even gotten that far into it, but just the language, the the this this is hardcore. Right. I mean, there's exactly. there's almost like a, like within the first five minutes, the lumberjack almost rapes a prostitute. Yeah, what are you? It's just a very unique, twisted, story. unique. Oh, man, it's... And, wow, just reinventing yeah. the fables. And this was like a DC comic license, but the, the graphics, oh my god, the production design, and the combat too is what I really like. What they improved from Walking Dead, like this kind of new touch based fluid real time combat just, that just feels right yeah. for the actual game you're playing. So great stuff from Telltale. They're also get, doing the Game of Thrones license now, so they're going to be doing multiple storylines of that. Yeah. And to kind of wrap it off with kind of like RPG kind of beautiful stuff, I've also been playing Tales of Zillia, which uh, came out uh, just this year for like the PS3. It's been out in Japan for a long time. I slept on this one. I, I'm not really into like the hardcore like anime, like female protagonist games and I, and I kind of slept on this one but then I actually gave it a spin and man the fighting system like what made it really stand up the fighting up. system it, yeah. it feels like they, they took no mercy for the N64 and threw it into an RPG oh, about magical scientists so it's cool because you actually fight on, on one axis and you, you you use directional based attacks to give you different you know repertoire oh, cool. but then it, it's just it just with the, the themes the fighting system the voice acting and just the beautiful like anime cutscenes this one's come down in price a lot. I mean, I got this for 20 bucks on Boxing Day, usually 30 or 40. The PS3, any any generation of PlayStation, it always becomes like the go-to JRPG machine near the end of the generation. And that's what you're really gonna see. Like, you already saw in this last year, but I think in 2014, with, with Monster Hunter coming out for PS3, and all this other stuff, you're really gonna see the JRPG, I think, start to solidify within the Western audience. So, you know, Tales of Zillia, I mean, if you're into like, you know, Nino Kuni, or, or Tales of Symphony or any of those cool like anime based RPGs, you gotta pick this one up, it's fantastic. Um, I think that's it, that's a pretty jam packed episode of Breaking News. We got a lot of great stuff, uh, all these new shows going on, we got review shows, podcasts, so subscribe yeah. to us on YouTube. You got your blog? I got my blog uh, as always, joemarin.blogspot.ca, I'm actually working on one that uh, 
I'm hoping to actually put out tomorrow where I'm talking about uh, how the multiplayer games have evolved from uh, you know us sitting on the couch playing games to where where we're playing uh, online multiplayer to how things have uh, taken a bit of a change with that you know with uh, with multiplayer gaming where you can put some of the Twitch stuff which is added. Add some stuff to, to the multiplayer. It's like a new stuff. realm of it, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's the virtual yeah. living room experience. It's it's, it's really really evolved. I'm, I'm going into depth about that, so that that will be out soon for you guys to look at. But what's funny too is that you notice now with like the Wii U having kind of a spike in popularity over the holidays, that whole couch co-op thing is really coming back. Yeah, and that's really nice to see because like, 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 like I've said, uh, to, to me, that era, I still consider that true multiplayer. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I've also got my blog, uh, the alarm bell network, uh, dot wordpress.com, which is kind of a smattering of cultural topics, so you can check that out. Video game to topics, music topics. Anyway, I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Moore. Another great episode of Breaking News for the Joystick Justice League. Stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you again soon, guys. Game on. Peace. Peace out. Back, choices. Ah, here we go again. <laughs> I can't say choices, just Play for the outtake girl now. <laughs> just like, fuck. Alright. Two episodes, zero mistakes. Three, two, one.